Sanja! Sanja, I love you, Sanja! What? You got to sit down. There you oh. go. You must be tired, Santa. You've been working oh, yeah. so hard. <laughs> I know. Come all this way. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, oh, so, oh. sorry, sorry. That, that's not it. That's not it. My bad. My bad. You said before you open it. Trust me. Oh no, I, I don't, don't think so. <laughs> jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell. You need bell, to get the bell. microphone closer to your mouth. Jingle bell, sing and jingle bell. Rock. That's not how you dress like Mary. Jing and paying and like it he do. Jing and paying. That's the jingle bell. Oh my God, I forget. Jing and paying. What I forget in life is that this little microphone is in people's ears. Yes. And they're strolling happily on their way to work. And they have Sophie Habu, this strange human. Sophie Lang. Singing, singing out of tune in their ear. Yeah, to a lot of people. Like, I just a lot of people just I that. just think it's you and I. No, no, no. There's a load like, of people. I have no correlation. Someone is in Gales right now getting... In someone's... Gales. Okay, someone's just in Tesco's getting their bakery. <laughs> I like that jump from Gales someone's to Someone's going Tesco. to the Shell Garage. and <laughs> Garage? Ga ga what? What have you got on your head? I've got to ask, like, who brought me? Like, why do I not speak right and say any... Because you've got spoonerism. Oh, it's true. That's my worst one, like McDonald's. Sophie has something called spoonerism. Now, spoonerism is a verbal error in which a speaker accidentally transposes the initial sounds or letters of two or more words often to humorous effect. As in the sentence, you have hissed the mystery lectures. I don't even know what that means. Basically, you mix words around. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. When I was a child, I got diagnosed. They said I had dyscalculus, but not with numbers, with letters. Because my mom was like, well, surely she's dyslexic. And they were like, no. So I never got extra time. Okay, we play a little test. Pick up, what's your, where's your right hand? That's oh your my left. Oh my God. <laughs> Honestly. I have to do that. She has to do that. When she's driving sometimes, puts her hands up. You can't so even drive. You, when you're driving sometimes, you put your hand and left or hand right up to like understand which way you need to turn. And you get cross at me, sat up, turn left and you turn right. I once dated this guy and he turned to me and he goes, I think what happens in your head, there's a little monkey with tambourines clapping. And then I met you and all I could think of is all that's going on in your head is a monkey dancing around clapping. So two of us together. God, what are our what two? What do you think happens to my head? I honestly would dread to think. I think it's firing in every cylinder. It's 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 Willy Wonka factory on a steroids. Like there's so much going on, it's frightening. <laughs> But also nothing going on, Jake King. That's Lay's game. What do you think goes on in mine? I I think yours goes, do you think I look all right? Do you think I look all right? Do you think I look okay? Do you Jamie, think I look okay? Jamie, honestly, sometimes when I'm dazing, he'll be like, are you okay? What are you thinking about? I'll be like, absolutely nothing. Nothing. Not one. Nothing. Not simple. one thought goes through your head sometimes. Also, we're dressed as Joseph and Mary today, but you're not quite dressed as Mary because you have- Karate Kid Mary. Uh, honey, don't you want to put your, take your Karate Kid thing on and put your little hat on and hold the baby up. No. It's Christmas, honey. Joseph wants to sit like this. Right? That's not Joseph, that's Jesus. Joseph oh, you're wasn't Joseph, the... sorry. No, we need to cut out because I could get bad people getting cross with me. Bad people getting cross with you for what? Not bad people, but just people getting cross with me. Tap, tap, tap on the shoulder. Just Go quickly. Back to school. You... RE studies would not be happy. Just quickly before we start the podcast, who do you think was at the nativity play? We Three Kings of Mer, Gold and Sands <laughs> and Joseph and Mary and the donkey. <laughs> Anyone else? Jesus. Okay, so... There's... Jesus was born in a cradle. They smothered him. Okay, they didn't spot that. <laughs> what so just quickly tell me this quick briefing kids. on the nativity story. Okay, what happens? Fine. Yeah, go. Um, the three kings get a, a Gabriel the star. I don't know. They might get hate for this. Gabriel the star tells three kings to carry presents because the star of Jesus has been born. I'm confused. <laughs> Um, the Star of David. The Star of David. Where's the Star of Gabriel gone? They're in Jerusalem, that's all I know. <laughs> and they carry gold, myrrh and frankincense. They travel down dusty roads with the donkey at tow. And in a hay bale, they have Mary, who is birthed. She's a virgin and she is birthed Jesus. And Joseph is very kindly sat there and there are some sheep around. And that's all. What day is it? The 25th of December. Yeah, very good. Okay. No one else? So three kings. Where is it? It's, it's famously in a stable. Jerusalem. Yeah, no, it, it's in a stable because they couldn't get any room in the... I, in the inn. I yeah. said it was in a stable with yeah, hay yeah. Right. and hay bells. Do you know what? 
you, you made it very lovely and the kind of sense, and the way that you've got a Mary's little band tied around your head and you're holding that baby. If I could give birth um, and you, I was a virgin, we'd never have sex and then suddenly I fell pregnant mm. and I said it was a gift from God, mm. would you be upset or would you agree with it? I'd obviously be very happy. You would? It would be incredibly famous. <laughs> No, I'm joking. I would be very happy. That would be a gift from God. You wouldn't think you, I've been up to some naughty business? You can't get pregnant. So what you're wanting me to do is ask you that question. So if I fell pregnant and I said, look, it's not yours, but I haven't cheated on you. It's a gift from God. What would you say? I would be like, get out of here. Get out of my pub. <laughs> I don't own a pub. <laughs> you clearly haven't watched She Sanders. All right, everybody. Let's begin the episode. Hello, everyone. Oh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Newlyweds Podcast. It's me, Jamie. It's me, Sophie. Welcome back, everybody. How's everyone's week going? I don't know. I think it's going good. <laughs> Why are you talking about it? How's your week going, Sophie? Yeah, just out the back, getting some ponies in. <laughs> Okay, right. I don't know. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to lie. My aura ring saying I really need to re re sleep and restore myself. I'm not feeling 100%. So don't expect 100%. No, you <laughs> Okay. All right. So what are we going to expect? What percentage? A solid 67. I can tell you exactly what readiness I am on my aura ring. Well, okay. Um, what, do, what, what, where do you think I'm on that level at the moment? Oh, you're, you're struggling. You're 40. I oh. told you, yeah, you're exhausted. There's nothing going on behind the ears. Really? Behind the ears. In between the ears. <laughs> yeah, there's some, you, you desperately need to sleep. And what do you do? Espresso martini, martini, espresso martini, espresso martini every night. We we went out for dinner the other night as well. We've had a couple of dinners this week. Why was that thing where you met those people, they recognised me and you are in the bathroom? Oh my God, guys, you don't understand. So we're, go, we're in this restaurant. It's quite a swanky like place. And I hear these girls being like, oh my God, oh my God, did you see him? That was him in real life. Oh my God, oh my God. He's so much shorter in real life. He's so short in real life. Oh my God, I can't believe how short he is in real life. But did you see how tall he was in real life? Short he was in real life. And I just think, who the f it doesn't cross my mind. They're talking about Jamie. And I walk out the loo. They literally look like they'd seen a ghost. Obviously, his wife coming out of the loo as they're calling my husband the shortest ass they've ever seen. I'm like, hello. And they were like, <gasps> and then as I walked out of the loo, I saw you walk out of the loo. I was like, oh, they obviously just walked past him as they came in and all the dots connected. But you look, it's a compliment. You look taller in the press, apparently. I don't think so. You're always half the head shorter than me. Did you see the comments that were on um, on TikTok about you when we were? I, I put this TikTok of you and I dancing next to each other, and you look much taller than me. And we're standing next to a door and some lights and things like that, some switches. The comments underneath are: "Is Jamie quite short?" Respectfully. Now I'm standing next to you. We're dressed in like nice outfits. I am also in six inch heels. Okay, fine. And I'm next to some light switches. But you are also quite short. I'm not. The next person will probably four foot seven. Oh, how tall do they think? They, people think I'm really short. They're very surprised that I'm tall in real life. The next person says, yeah, just look how tall he is compared to things like light switches and door handles. And the person only said, I was thinking this, the door handle is quite, it's quite a tell. Respectfully, I'm not wanting to be mean. He just has a taller vibe on YouTube sitting down. <laughs> what the hell? So, big dick energy. Is that what it is? Mm. B D E. Mm. Do you you have a bit of B D E? I thought you said you've got a bit of something on your nose. <laughs> you have a bit of B D E. I don't have a dick, so no, I don't. <laughs> you don't think you need to have a dick to have B D E? Yeah, you do. No, you don't, sister. What's female versions like boss bitch energy? Yeah, you're a boss bitch. That's what bitch. you're saying. Thanks, B D E. So do you, also this week, so it's been quite so this week, um, you were you were saying to me about how much you like my skin. You're saying you love my skin. Yeah. And you, I got two things to say, actually. Mm. So if I died, Sophie would skin me alive and keep my skin as a scarf. And no, just I have wouldn't. It. I would stuff you. <laughs> okay. I would stuff you because your skin is lovely. So if I died, you would stuff me. Yeah, but then it. I thought about it and it's a bit weird to do that. What position would you stuff me in? Lying, obviously. But yeah, you're stuffing you. You can move, but they rock solid. You stuff me full of stuff. You can put me standing up. Oh no, I'd have you lying in bed, but that's really creepy. I'm giving myself the ick. So I don't know. On second thoughts, I wouldn't do it. Maybe I would crush you into a diamond and wear you. 
So you wouldn't be able to feel my skin. I know, but that is quite gross to feel a dead person's skin and stroke it. I think that maybe you had to have to go to a place to get help if that's what I was doing. But if you were going to stuff me if I died, yeah. what position would you put me in? Um, spoon, like in a spoony position. <laughs> so every time you got into bed, yeah, you would stuff, you would, well, you would cuddle my stuffed body. The theory behind it would just be that like, I could still sleep with like you but it wouldn't be you <laughs> can I say something they did this morning like what? because we had a little argument on the phone yeah. this morning I didn't actually tell you what I did <laughs> can I just say Jamie's really grumpy at the moment like how chilled am I I'm honestly yeah, so you're calm very yeah, you're very your, phew, your emotions are all over the place I'm a, I, I, it's getting to the end of the year I think that's yeah I think I'm not sick. that grumpy I'm, I'm aura ring 65 so look Anyway, this is no word of a lie. Okay, I was, I was, I'm not going to say what it was, but I was doing a gym session today. Why? Because you're so famous, you'll scare people who follow you. Then. No, I'm not. But I was doing a gym session today in a gym workout Why? place. Why? Where was it? It was one of those classes. I'm not going to say what it Why was. Why are we? I don't want to say what it is. I'll tell you what happened. Anyway, it's when loads of people were running on the running machine. And I was running on the running machine really fast and I really needed a fart. No, no, so, no. So I was running. This is no one. I was running on the running machine and I thought, okay, no one will smell it, whatever. It's fine. So I farted. And it smelled really bad. And I looked to my left, and the lady next to me went, Oh! <laughs> and had to stop running. No, I'm sorry, she, that's. She went like this, Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I the really, running machine. I actually am so embarrassed. I find that, and I actually, when I used to burst a climber, be at our people used to fart and it would whack me, and I actually wanted to punch them. I was like, "You are disgusting. Who would do that?" And it's whacking me in the face when I'm trying to exercise. You're exercising with your mouth open, trying to breathe. You're that bastard. You rank human being. Ugh. Uh, okay, listen, everybody, we have an amazing episode today. Really, really fun. Buckle but up, sit tight, it's ready to roll. Buckle up, sit tight, sisters and brothers, because we have our special guests, my mum and Soph's dad, Patrick and Penny, back on the podcast together for a lovely Christmas episode because it's Christmas. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be amazing. All right, everybody, please welcome to the podcast my mum and my dad, Patrick Habu and Penny. Guys, welcome to the podcast. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank to the you. Podcast. Um, Merry Christmas. Um, ma- kick things off, Mum. I'm not with you for Christmas this year. Do you know it's it's not going to be a good Christmas for me? I've got none of you. I had you all last year for Christmas, and uh, not my year. <laughs> Are you really upset about it? No, because I'm used to it. So you know, you're used to it now. Yeah, you have to get used to it. That's what Princess Diana said. You will get used to it. And you, I did. You're giving me very Princess Diana vibes at the moment. Like you are yes. actually with your... Do I look yeah, quite you know, Princess Diana? Earrings. It's the hair as well. Yeah. I see. Dad, you don't mind at all when we're not with you for Christmas. Last year when I was... <laughs> that makes that's me so, a bit harsh. so really... I, that's, ca- what, that's what... We were meant to go to Dad's for Christmas last year and then we changed last minute and we were with your mum's or something happened. No, no, no. we were going to try and persuade your dad to come to us because you were coming to us and stay in one of the barns up the drive. That's it, because we thought he would, you know, not But he was be off to South Africa. his children for Christmas and I called you up and you said, no, no, don't worry, I'm... Oh, that's great. I'll book South Africa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no worries whatsoever. Cape Town for Christmas Day. But can I ask you, so what was Sophie like on Christmas Day? Was she nice? Was she awful? Because I remember Christmas me and I was awful on some No, I, I will honestly say you were so sweet, so excited. I mean, still are actually about Christmas. You still get very, very excited. Still but it was a big time. thing in our house. Um, we had a, we lived in a big old, Georgian retro and we had fireplaces all over the place do you remember and at Christmas we'd have big log fires dogs roaming around mm. and you and Georgia and Sarah your mum were fantastic at making Christmas decorations you really really we went all out oh my god it what? was yeah yeah it yeah. was like a Nordic scene it, it was, was a proper proper Christmas with baking mince pies all helping mum. I mean, it was a real... And my father lived with us at the time, didn't he? Yeah. So he would come in. He was a great Aww. cook. So it was a real... And I just used to sort of just wander in and out. And they were all busy doing things, making decorations. It was a really big deal. We did not have any of that. Um, That's not... You guys still <coughs> do stockings. Um, we, we did none of that. We did... We still do stockings. Which I think is honestly the best... That's the best thing you about your You always family. got a stocking from me. Yeah, but I didn't get any of that stuff. Where's all the mince pies and the, the well, Christmas cheer? No, that was all there. Well, Dad once came back on Christmas Eve <laughs> from a trip, so there wasn't much build-up. Um, and then the trouble is, 
you know, then I was in London yeah. with you three and our house only fitted six around the kitchen table, if you remember. Mm -hmm. So we never, ever once had Christmas at home. We always went on my year with you. We always went probably skiing or somewhere we were nice. Just, yeah, we were never... Sorry. I, Woe is me, I had to go skiing. Wait, I would rather dogs by the fire having like a nice Christmas tree and doing it that way. That sounds way nicer. But the lucky thing is that you didn't have it when you were young, so you can have therapy about that. But you've had it ever since <laughs> I've been with Jonathan because we've created the best Christmases. We've done all that decorating the house and the tree and... Majorly. Yeah, majorly. Patrick, I remember one year we went skiing. And um, I threw a tantrum on the mountain mm -hmm. uh, when we were skiing on Christmas Day. Refused to ski. And mum grabbed me. You grabbed me, grabbed me by the collar and you said, you've ruined Christmas. I then burst into tears. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you throw a tantrum? Because I wasn't allowed to go down the run or something. What about the Christmas we took you to Val d'Isere? Oh, here we go. And we paid a fortune for this chalet. We were all there. And your two stepbrothers, and there was a whole great big chalet. And Jamie was absent. I don't know where Jamie went, but he was never there. And then he didn't even fly back on the flight with us. He just said, I'm staying out here. What? He was yeah. so. It was, these were the lost years. Of and Jamie. these were the Made in Chelsea, I'm really yeah. famous. No, it was not. It was, it was really the Made famous. in Chelsea, I'm so cool. You met some awful chap out there who you wanted to spend time with who was drunk and so you were never there for dinner you never skied with us in the day and then you didn't even catch the flight back with us no you're joking true I well, do remember where, that you, where were you on Christmas Day? I, th oh, well, I think he was there on Christmas Day I think day. I was there on Christmas Day yeah so like Christmas Eve you were just giddy out. Christmas Eve I was there um, I just it was just more fun there were nightclubs and I wanted to go to the nightclubs that's what happened. Patrick, this is painting in a really bad light. Yeah. And do you You're know not what? Not looking good. Not looking good at all. But Mike, you know what? I've made up for it in recent years. You have, because now you're all about Christmas. Yeah. You, you were quite naughty as a kid, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, that's why you're together because you were so naughty too. Yeah, what do people, could I was children are going to be like, this is a real worry. <gasps> God, combined, you could have... You, <laughs> Mind you, you've got good genes in you because George is very sensible and steady and yeah. your big brother Alexander's so sensible and steady. We had um, someone called Helen on the podcast who works, who founded a company called... Dad knows Oh, her. you know... For, she, Helen's amazing. 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 And she has, you know, I, I listened to that and it, it really, really hit home because, you know, we have a huge, as a family, huge thank you to, to say to Helen because, you know, Georgia quite possibly would have been in a situation where she's just got married this year, as you know, and she would have been wanting to start having a family. And without having taken that simple little home test, she would be now thinking... Really? Yeah, because she was... It was three years ago. So George mm. was 28. She's super fit. She's vegan. She does marathons, so she doesn't really drink. And she just did that one test, and it said, you are egg production's really low for your age and you better do something really quickly. She's early menopause. No. Yeah. Mm. So she, did she freeze did you, some eggs? She did IVF. Yeah. She got frozen embryos. She got frozen embryos. Yeah. So, but the point is... With Tom. Yeah. With Tom. Mm. <laughs> no, with a <the> stranger. <laughs> <laughs> with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've read a bit about this and frozen eggs are so much less viable than a frozen than embryo. embryo. Correct. Yeah. So really well done, Georgia, because that's a big thing to undertake. It really is. And it, but the point is, had... Had we not known Helen, in, in all probability, Georgia would have merrily carried on, just gets married literally this summer, would have then been trying to start having a baby now, and in all likelihood would have would been have too failed. late. Well, Sophie, you'd have had so, to have the baby for her. I did, it did cross my mind that. Mm. <laughs> but it would, would have, have would it be my, it would it would be my be ex. Egg. It would so be, be my child. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Because <laughs> we've been talking about kids and all this kind of stuff. What advice? So obviously, I, Mummy, I'm your son, mm. and Patrick, Sophie is your daughter. What advice, Patrick, you first, would you give to people who um, are possibly thinking about having kids? What advice would you give? Um, well, on one hand, <laughs> I would say... say um, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd hesitate, first yeah. of all. <laughs> no, I would say, honestly... Um, it is the best thing you can ever do. It really is a blessing in the, the in life that you can have children. It, it enriches your life. The downside is I would stop at one. 
Well, I don't know about you, the second childs are always pretty bad news, aren't they? <laughs> Why is it always the second child that's worse? Are you two both second child? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Why is it always the second? I said this to Dad. We went for dinner last night and I drove back and I said, I feel like people don't like their second kid. And Dad went, hmm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why is that? Because we're nightmares that's right <laughs> I honestly came out screaming and I didn't stop screaming what advice would you give her? without my children my life would be so much less you are the best thing I've ever done but I would also say if you're when you get married wait really if you can if you've got the time wait because enjoy the time married because you'll never get that back. And once a child arrives, you think it changes when you get married, but when a child arrives, everything changes because you're not free. It's a, such a huge change in your relationship. So I would make the most of being married and do everything you want to do and have fun and really be with each other before you bring a child into the mix. When you are a couple, you you have 100% attention for each other and you have less responsibilities. When you've got children, mm. you've got to share your time, your energy, your love with another mm. being. And then when the uh, second child comes along, that's like splitting even. And, you know, I don't know how you people manage with three, four, five, six. I mean, I, I would just give up. I would, I would stop being a parent if I had more than also, two. Also, you're so six. tired. Really? You're just really tired. I think I spent the whole of my 30s either throwing up because I was pregnant or tired. <laughs> My granny, my mum's mom, told me this amazing story once about my grandfather. Did she tell you this? Uh, enlighten me. Okay, so the story goes as this. So my grandmother was a tough woman. She's called Ruth. <laughs> She's very tough. Wait, is this Penny's mother? This is my mum's mother. My mother. Anyway, she was dating my grandfather's flatmate. Mm. And um, she was going back and forth to his apartment. And every single time she'd go into the apartment, she would see my grandfather sitting in the corner reading a newspaper. And... She liked him because she saw his hands and he was doing the crossroads. He didn't speak to him, just liked him. One night, the flatmate said, look, Ru uh, can you take Ruth home? So he said, all right, take Ruth home. So he took my grandmother home. He drove her home and he got out the car, went around the other side, opened the car door and said to my grandmother, Ruth, you're home now. It's time to get out. And my grandmother, being her, said, I'm not getting out. And he said, you've got to get out. And she said, I'm not. I like the conversation. I don't want to get out. And he said, if you get out, I'll marry you. And she said, you'll regret that in the morning. And he phoned her the next morning and said, I don't regret it. And they got married. Wow. Goosebumps. Isn't Super that romantic. amazing? You obviously um, knew that story. Right? I do know that story. Isn't and it amazing? They always used to say, I said, well, how, you hadn't even had dinner, you no, nothing. And my father said, I asked her to marry, marry me to get her out of the car. <laughs> And they probably freezing. Even, so they hadn't even had kissed. The it's and amazing. Then, anyway, it? they lasted. They lasted. And that was it. I grew up in a two-bedroom flat in the Middle East with my father holding a newspaper and the sound of the BBC World Service, the news. Oh, my God. Pachik, what, what were your parents like? My father was from the Middle East, so yeah. he, he would be much more... We were destined. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Fate weaves its Fate. magic. Yeah. Always. <laughs> It'd be very weird, actually. I, I don't think... I, if you suddenly guys said, look, we're getting married. No, no. Listen, we, yeah. we are going to be yeah. the next newlyweds. Honest, <laughs> we, we, that's, that's us. We're going to be nearlyweds. It would, mm. Honestly, it would really upset me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> really, I'd say, what were your parents like? Um, they were... Uh, I'd say they were very different. My mother was um, English. Well, she was half Irish, half French. Yeah. Um, and God, such a sexy combination. I had a boyfriend <laughs> once, half Irish, half French. <laughs> what? <laughs> I did. Then, then threw a bit of Iraq. And um, you've got the perfect yeah, mixture. Oh. I mean, what, what, what more could you want? That's oh, it. my so God. My grandfather had seven sons, all of whom he sent to boarding to schools. Boarding. Yeah, America, Sweden, <laughs> Switzerland, oh, England, Scotland. Yeah. My dad went to, after he finished boarding school, he went to Tunbridge and went finished... Oh, boarding. my father went to Tunbridge. <gasps> it's um, Destiny. Oh. This, is, this is so... Honestly, my, your grandfather, I know. the silent one with the times, yeah. Tunbridge. And he finished his first degree and then kind of said, got to, got, to, got to get a job. His father said, well, you know, that's it. Done, you've got to get a job. So they conned my father, my grandfather back in Baghdad, busy, 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 busy running his businesses, said, you know, in England, you can't get a proper job. You always need two degrees. Otherwise, they don't take you seriously. So, okay, go on. So he then took a second degree 
And at Loughborough. No, they went to Kingston then to, God, do, to do that. And then, um, and then after he did the second, and then by the way, then his other brothers f also passed at Loughborough, decided to do second a second degree. degree. So my grandfather's paying them. Oh, by this by this time, my father's married with three children. <laughs> Has, has a house in Surrey with no mortgage and, and a car. And he's doing his... And still doing a degree. He's still doing a degree. And one of my, my grandfather's friends said, why have your, none of your sons started to work? And they're like in their mid-30s and they're all still students. <laughs> and every one of them is doing multiple degrees. He said, well, yeah, apparently you can't get a good job in the West. I said, that's absolute rubbish. And oh he, cut the he cut the money off there and then. Oh, there and then. my God. I didn't speak to my father for 10 years. Really? Yeah, yeah, he didn't speak to him for 10 years. That is wild. Yeah. Oh, God, that took a turn. <laughs> that took a turn. That is poor. Mm. Yeah, what happened was... What yes. happened to you? you, you okay, so what happened was I was with this sort of recruiting agency, <laughs> gave my degree to them because I'd never worked, and they were sort of placing me and they kept bringing me into all these different random jobs. And one of the places they took me in <laughs> they may had no training, obviously, but I, I'm assuming it was a pretty straightforward job. You had to answer the phone, you'd click, click, put them through to another line. A receptionist. Essentially, yeah, but it, yes, it was a receptionist. I there was, we go. I was that, trying to make it a little bit more high end, but, you know, it was just. You'd like, click, click, and connect the but, boss to. No, but what I would do is I would get so overwhelmed. They'd be like, can you put me through to it? And I would just go, oh. And then <laughs> put the phone down. You just put I the did phone it down. So many times, and they called me that evening when I left my first day at work, and he said, "For some reason, they don't want you to come back tomorrow." It was like a six month. <laughs> I am organised now. Okay, um, Patrick, you haven't been on the podcast since the wedding. If you have to give us more advice about married life and what success is about relationships, what would it be? Um. First of all, I would say this summer the wedding was fantastic, a, uh, and then obviously we had. Georgia and Tom getting married again. So effectively, it was four weddings because we had <laughs> two London weddings, two Spanish weddings. It was the summer of love. It's the best yeah. summer I've ever had, honestly. I think <laughs> it was just such a fantastic summer. And I just thought everybody was so happy, so yeah. pleased to see you. I think one thing that was interesting, people said, well, oh, God, was it stressful? And yeah, pre-wedding it was. But I, I think it's really interesting because I know a lot of people listen to you who are yeah. planning their weddings. Don't fuss about the details. We went into so much detail oh about this, gosh. that, and the other. And actually, when the wedding happens, literally everyone there is in yeah. a good mood. Literally mm. everyone there loves you, and that's why they're there. And I didn't even see it at George's wedding. I didn't even see the cake. I didn't realise there really? was a cake. You I didn't realise there was a cake. I didn't see our dessert buffet. I, didn't, <gasps> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't, you couldn't know. miss the dessert buffet. I missed the dessert buffet at the I, didn't, I, 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 I saw that. I, I didn't. Re I didn't actually realise until the very end that there was a churros of a churros van. Oh, churros I did because I'd that, seen it on it? the costings. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and found the churros trolley. That's true, actually. Mm. But but between, yeah. So so it, so I agree with you. This summer's been amazing. It's been full of love. It's been unbelievable. Are you sad though that now both your daughters are married? And you no. now have so you're no, happy with that. So relieved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm really, uh, really happy. And I have said this before. I think I won the Euro Millions mm -hmm. with you and Tom. I mean, you know, to have you two as son-in-laws is just an Aww. absolute. It's true, isn't it? I mean, you know, you're not always that you lucky. You kind that. of think we'll <laughs> like them and hope you like them, but. I really have lucked out with you two guys. So, um, oh, and we've happy. lucked out with you. Patrick. Not as much as we've lucked out having Sophie. Oh, oh, oh. mama, this spot is so lovely. <laughs> no. what? Stop. Not as much as I've lucked out having you. Oh, this <laughs> is a <laughs> look. Before we go into listeners' messages, which we haven't vetoed or looked at as always, because Jack, producer Jack, just gives them to us. Mum, so what's the advice? Go, give it to me. Something lovely. Appreciate each other. There we go. That's it. Just be nice. Be kind. Kill each other with kindness if there you can. You and I would say also don't fuss about the minor yeah. irritations, the minor decisions. There's In your life, there will be 5, 10, 15 big decisions that really determine the path of your life. They're the ones to get right. Do I... Do I do, you know, going back, do I do these A-levels or not? Do I go to university or not? Do I do this job or not? Do I get married or not? Those are the ones you've got to get. And who do I get married to? Do I have to? All the other bits that we worry about and fret about during during our day-to-day, -day, we think, oh my, this is so important. I'm so stressed. We were with Georgia last night. She said, oh, I'm worried about this and I'm nervous. It's like in 
12 it's months irrelevant. time, you won't, you won't even remember what you were worried about. Don't worry about the little stuff because mm. it all sorts itself out. Focus on the big key decisions that you two are making in your lives and for your children. All the other little bits, kind of if you go left or right, doesn't really matter. You'll come back onto the right path. I love it. That is yeah, yeah. fantastic advice. That is unbelievable. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, right. Um, it's now time for our favourite part of the episode, which is so... Listeners' messages. I wanted to share a hilarious story from when I was younger. Me and my young brother, I was 10 and he was 8, thought it was hilarious at the time to hide behind doors, under beds, etc., to make people jump. We would even hide under our parents' bed. And as my dad got in from work, we'd shout boo and give him the fright of his life. One day, we thought outside the box and found a new hiding place. There was a small cupboard in our tiny bathroom which had a wooden slated door so it was slightly see-through. Being the bossy older sister, I insisted my brother hid in the cupboard and I wait for someone to come and use the toilet. Then he'd jump out of there when they least expected it. (laughs) I'm scared. My little brother sat cramped up in the little cupboard waiting for my mum and dad to come in. I lingered around outside waiting for our victim to enter. We didn't think about the fact our attic was being converted at the time, so it wasn't just family in the house. Next thing I know, a builder came charging into the bathroom, slammed the door behind him and locked it. Oh no. I waited to hear my brother reveal himself and scurry out, but nothing. 20 minutes passed. When I heard the toilet flush and the builder left. Moments later, my brother left the bathroom red-faced and very stressed. I asked him what had happened. He then proceeded to tell me that he felt too awkward to reveal himself to the builder, so he sat like a statue, hardly hardly breathing, <laughs> in a cupboard, while watching the builder take a massive shit. <laughs> Shouldn't give us a no wonder, he, no wonder he was hardly breathing. <laughs> Forced to inhale the smell, yeah. all the while the builder watched the whole episode of Governor's <laughs> Day. <laughs> <laughs> on his phone. <laughs> on his phone. On <laughs> that is vile. And oh my god. So That's good. hilarious. <laughs> Moral of the story: always check who's in your house before hiding in a tiny bathroom <laughs> cupboard. Safe to say, we stopped playing that game. That oh, is so, that's so funny. Good. I love that. Dad, you're in luck. This is a love story. You ready, guys? So this is from Paige. She says, "Hi, Jamie and Sophie. I have a love story for you." About four years ago, I was at my uncle's wedding when there was a guy at the bar I recognised from college. He studied music in the year above me and I studied musical theatre. We began speaking and I instantly felt a connection. He bought me a drink, by which point my boyfriend at the time walked over and introduced himself. Which, of course, made things rather awkward, to which we parted ways and the guy got up on the stage. Turns out he was the drummer in the wedding band. After the wedding, I put it down to a passing moment and let go of the feeling I felt. Fast forward two years when I split up with my then boyfriend and I was blindly scrolling through Tinder when I came across a familiar face. The drummer from my uncle's wedding. I swiped right and turned out it was a match. We went on a date on the 27th of December, which was two years to the day that I saw him play in the band at the wedding. A date that lasted a total of four hours and finding out that he had actually also taught my younger brother to play drums as well as work with my dad on gigs in the past. Spooky coincidence. Since that first date two years ago, we have now bought our first home together. We are Mm. proud dog parents and engaged to be married with the wedding being in 2025. I never believed in the phrase, if it's meant to be, it will be until now. Oh, that is sweet, so lovely. I love that. That is so, so lovely. I have a love story to read here and it's from Jess. Okay, here we go. Make it nice and magical. Magical. I have a wonderful, magical, modern day love story that I'd like to share for the pod. I have a huge love story that shook up my life just a couple of months ago. I'm a 28-year-old Canadian girl currently living in Japan to teach English for a year and went on hinge as any single girl in a big city would. I matched with a cutie and messaged him straight away as I was quite smitten by his profile. He wrote back instantly in terrible dismay as he was technically location catfishing. What does that mean? Did you get that? No, no no idea. And actually living in Ireland. Well, that's pointless. She's in Japan. He booked a trip to Japan for December. It was currently August. God, good man. We said, fuck it. 
as you do, and kept chatting. And within five minutes, he jokingly asked me to fly to Ireland, Ireland, to meet him and said that we were going to get married one day. Fast forward a month and we have now moved to FaceTime. Fast forward, and the connection was unimaginable, unlike anything we had felt in previous relationships. We had felt, so he's feeling it too. That's mm. nice. So after a month of talking, I took up his offer and booked a ticket to Dublin to meet and stay with him for a week because that's all I had off from work. This flight from Japan to Ireland is over 20 hours. So your girl was really hoping for the best case scenario here. Anyways, the moment we saw each other in the airport, we instantly knew we were made for each other. It had confirmed what both of us was feeling through FaceTime that past month. He asked me to be his girlfriend the second night. We majorly felt and said, I love you the third night. And now I'm te leaving my teaching gig early to move with him, to move in with him in Dublin come February. Isn't life wild? My whole life has done a complete 180 and I'm the ha happiest and luckiest girl in the whole entire universe. That's lovely. Wow. Well, well done, That's Hinge. real long distance. Mm. That's lovely. That's Isn't that just... See, that proves about really getting to know each other for a month. You and, know, before and it what? works before you meet. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, that's what exactly. Yeah. It's wonderful. Okay, we have uh, another love story, Patrick, that you're going to read. Okay, so this is from Judy. This is a love story of how my grandparents met. Now, when they were in their 20s, they were both married very early. It was what you did back then. They both grew up in a smallish town near York. My granddad bumped into Valerie, my grandma, at the post office. Apparently, they were both sending off Christmas presents to friends and laughed and joked about how they had chosen matching wrapping paper. Grandad said when he first saw my grandma, he was totally smitten, but had to hide the feelings because of his marriage at the time. Oh, so he was married. Ten years passed and they both moved on and lived different lives. In that period, Grandad left his previous marriage and became a bus driver. One day, on his usual route, he recognised a face he hadn't seen in years. It was her, Valerie, my grandma. His heart started beating and he knew he had to speak to her. So he stopped at the next bus stop and told everyone on the bus that he'd be just five minutes. Wow. He ran out of the bus and went straight up to grandma. Without even thinking about it, he introduced himself and explained how they'd met so many years ago. It just so happened that my grandma had also separated from her marriage and was starting to date again. Without even exchanging phone numbers, they just said they'd meet up the next evening at six at their local pub. And the very next day, they both met up, on time, and my granddad said he just knew she was the one. Aww. A year later, they were married. On the wedding day, my granddad gave grandma a little present. It was wrapped in the exact same paper as when they first met all those years ago. Oh. <laughs> He kept just a bit of that role. He didn't know why at the time, but it must have been for this reason. I mean, I'm getting tingly on oh, my no. back now. 40 years later, and they're still together, still in love. They still hug each other. They dance together and laugh every day. I hope this sto story brings you some joy from Judy. Well, it did. It's oh, a beautiful a story. Judy. So lovely. A lovely Isn't story. it fantastic? Oh. Judy, that is so gorgeous. That is fantastic. I love that one. Guys, I said every single time, but I just really just thank you for sending and sharing all of your stories. It, it's so nice, whether they're love stories or not love stories or funny stories or stories about poo, um, which <laughs> Sophie gets annoyed at. Um, they're amazing. So please, please keep sending them in to at Newlyweds Podcast on Instagram. Just slide into our DMs and we can reply or send us an email, newlyweds at jampopproductions.co. UK. Isn't that great? Fab. Fab. That's the end of Listener's Messages. When did you find out that? Uh, when was your. Oh, who's that? Who could that be? It's what? a guest. Hello? It... Hello? Postman. Oh. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> it's Santa! Santa! Hello, Santa Christmas. Hello, Santa! Santa, can I ask you a question? Have you painted your eyebrows? I'm the real Santa. <laughs> okay, Santa. So, Santa, do you have some presents for us? Of course, I have presents. Why would I come if I don't have presents? <laughs> let, let me just get. I can get it. Go on, there you go. There you go. There we oh. go, Santa. 
Let's see what we've got here. But first of all, mm. are you on the good list or are you on the naughty list? Definitely the good list. Definitely the good list. My mother's on the naughty list. Oh. <laughs> I've been so good all year. Uh, wait, Patrick, was Sophie ever on the naughty list? Constantly on the naughty list. That's not true. Yeah, you were. I was a big Father Christmas fan. Oh, yeah, we did. Every single mm -hmm. Christmas Eve, we had to do the, you know, put this sort of flower on the on her bed from the wall. That's not what happens. We, it was snow. Oh, sorry. I thought it was snow. <laughs> and make the, foot, make the footprints in it them. It wasn't snow. <laughs> and eat the half a carrots. No, that was Rudolph that did that. <laughs> I, 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 we stayed at um, our cousins once and I saw my uncle, I'm not going to say which one it was, um, come into my room completely naked, carrying my, carrying my, um, my stocking and put it on the end of the bed. And I just had one eye open watching him do it. And <laughs> Why that's was he naked? Well, I don't know, because it was late at night. He probably slept naked. That's the... a wrong way to do Santa. Yes. <laughs> Just to clarify, he, sh he should have called me. <laughs> Terrible. Murray, was I ever on the naughty list? Well, you and Sophie are very similar. You were constantly, you were always on the naughty list. Mm. And I would, you would, we had a, a system that every Christmas system. Eve, we would write a letter to Santa, which we then burnt and sent up the chimney. And on it, you would write what you wanted Santa to give you. And so I knew what Santa was giving you because, spoiler here, I'd wrapped them. Um, <laughs> and Jamie would write down Rolex, Porsche, whatever. And I'd go, well, wouldn't you like some pencils? <laughs> no, he said. I'd say, well, what about a sharpener? <laughs> and you'd go, no, I want fake dog poo. And, and then, you wouldn't get it? No, because I'd oh, already wrapped them. Jamie, I know Santa. That's typical parents stuff. They kill your dreams since you're little. They do, Santa. Mm, that's not the way. Santa, all, sorry, Santa, all I wanted was a, a Simba and a Nala that kissed by like men, magnetic oh. mouths and I didn't get it. Lovely, lovely. I, I, I wanted that as a kid too. Maybe it's in Santa's sack now, Simba and Nala. Oh yes, because you said you're on the good list. The parents claim you're on the naughty list. So I think you're on the good naughty list. Okay. How about that? Okay. Let's How see about what that? we've got. Well, let's see what we've got here. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, that, that's not it. That's not it. My bad, my bad. All right, hold on a sec. You know, really. I thought you'd had been listening to our podcast and knew that Jamie needed. Oh, you're my favorite YouTubers. You're my favorite YouTubers, guys. Of course, I have been listening. Oh, there you are. Something, something for people on the good naughty list. It okay. says, I'm a hundred percent recyclable. Okay. Oh, it that. looks a dodgy shape. Yeah, that, sorry. That, that, that doesn't Sophie? look good. Sophie, that's for you. I'm Patrick, unsure with it parents. Look we don't like the look of that. No, I, I don't think I you know open it. that. You got this is from Santa. Santa. Yeah, this is from me. No, I, I can feel the, bad vibes. Don't, energy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's it? What was Santa's not going to? Santa, it'd be lovely. With it. I reckon. What I think? I think it it's could a, be a, an it, egg cup. Well, just said before you open it. Trust me. Remember what they gave you last year. Mm-hmm. A very nice elf elf outfit. Did you? Yeah, it was very sexy. And look what happened. Oh, yeah. Jamie crack on the baby making stuff straight away. <laughs> yeah, so and here we that's are. That's something good, trust me. <laughs> okay, we're going to open this. What oh, my God. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Is it? What? Oh, no. I don't, I don't think so. It. No, no. Okay, I'm, I def know I'm definitely looking away at this right <laughs> at this know. moment in time. I, I don't want to know what that is. I'm, I think I'm, it's a carrot grater. <laughs> I, think it, I think it's one of those telephones. <laughs> I think it's a telephone. <laughs> Please put it away. Put it away. It's, it's big and purple and has um, a lot of buttons on it. Um, and, and it's from somewhere and I love honey. <laughs> I don't, if you turn it upside down, it looks like a whale. I don't no, know. it looks like a submarine. <laughs> it does, actually. It does. It's a submarine. There we go. Yeah. It's like a purple submarine. If you rub it, the gin may come out. <laughs> Oh, oh, the genie. It's a magic lamp. The genie will come out. Yeah, yeah. Well, usually it comes out well if you rub it long enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, oh, oh, no. I'm not very familiar. <laughs> Miss Santa tucked it for What she are said, we talking about right now? Can we move it. on? <laughs> <laughs> the baby, just, the baby's the listening. Baby, don't listen. Santa, do we have another present? Of course I have another oh, present. Oh, oh, wow, Claire. Let yeah, me I see, let me see. 
<laughs> oh, damn, well, that looks more like it. Also 100% recyclable. <laughs> Thank you. From Patrick to you. Oh. Annie, wow. do you want to open it? Okay. Here we go. Well, at least we don't Dominoes. have to. Dominoes. Open it slow. Okay. Build the tension. I think it's for you. What is it? Oh, my. <laughs> Some anus or cream. <laughs> For Jamie's problem. I don't problem. have. I don't have. How does Patrick oh, wow. know about your personal problems? Listen, the whole world knows about really? his pile problem. Oh, that's so <laughs> awful. Uh, it, it also, this one says it soothes itching, relieves discomfort, and shrinks bottles. <laughs> Thank you. Enough. Okay. Moving is, on again. That's... This is really taking a turn. <laughs> Rapidly absorbed, which is great. Patrick, that is so kind. That's more. Very more than welcome. Okay. That's a very generous person. That is so generous. <laughs> very thoughtful. Is that for the winter when your lips are cracked? <laughs> <laughs> you can put it on your lips if you want. I can't vouch you what will happen. <laughs> very good. Very thoughtful indeed. Thank you, Santa. Santa, do we have anything else? Oh, of course, I have more <laughs> stuff. Uh, oh, this is my favourite. This is from Penny oh, for wow. you. For wow. both of you. For both oh. of you. And as you can see, it's not recyclable. <laughs> so, you know, I have big hopes for this one. <laughs> okay. There you are. Okay, honey. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. So it feels like a picture. Yeah. You ready for this? It says hand printed oh. on the back by George Blonde. Are we going to turn it around? Oh my God. That's amazing. No. I love I'm gonna cry. Don't cry. That oh is amazing. God, that's oh, that's fantastic. Mama. That's amazing. Penny. With the actual date of your, your wedding. I know. So it's it's a frame and in it is a book and it says special edition and on it it says Jamie and Sophie and it says the 14th of April 2023, which is the date of our London wedding when we got uh married. And it's just it's all in the frame, it's wonderful. It's amazing. That is so lovely. I'm so glad to bring to bring to you so much happiness, guys. That's been it's been a pleasure for me, and that's what I live for to bring happiness to people. Oh, oh. Santa, where have you, where are you off to next? Oh, yeah. I'm off to Hackney, <laughs> <laughs> then Walthamstow, <laughs> and all the way to Hertfordshire. <laughs> wow! And then where, where's your on last the stop? Yeah, on the but, no, I'll come back to Hackney. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got the reindeers with you? Oh yeah, park them on the rooftop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the very nice stuff in the building. So they feed them Rudolf Munches very well on hay. Mm. On cake. Hay. Hay. He, he, he loves cake too. You know <laughs> him well. Santa, Santa, can I ask you a quick question before you go? Can you name all your reindeer? Of course, <laughs> Rudolf, James, Harry, <laughs> Megan, uh, Purple, Violet. <laughs> Sophie and Charisma. <laughs> you named one after me? Of course, I told you you're my favorite YouTubers. Oh, I love being a YouTuber. Santa, Merry Christmas. We love you. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Santa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Santa. Hey guys, how do you feel about us going on tour again? I know, and it's more than one night, isn't it? It's more than one it's night. Are you guys ready? Tour. We're doing seven nights. That's amazing. On the trot. Well, no. not on the trot, is it? No, we're doing like weekends. I don't actually know. But, but we, we're doing a couple nights. But we've sold out about 80% now. Have you? Of the tickets. Congratulations, guys. We sold, we nearly sold out the Apollo two nights in a row. That's incredible. It's unbelievable. Where's the Apollo? You know, in Hammersmith in London. Oh, I know. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that's the Apollo. It's Amazing. three and a half thousand seats. Your brother or sister ought to come to one of those nights because they live in Hammersmith. <laughs> What, would you come on stage again, maybe? I'd love to. I'd love to, but yeah. do you think everyone would be bored of seeing us on stage? Why do you think people would be bored of you? No, we'd love that. Should we have dinner afterwards? <laughs> yeah, done. Yeah. Ah! Um, okay, so you guys are going to have to buy your tickets, though. <laughs> That's fine. You're going to have to buy the tickets. If you can just go to uh, the link in our description, you can get your tickets there. Okay. There's a, the 80% have gone, guys, so you better get them. <laughs> we better, we better we'll, we'll be on it. Yeah. Okay, because otherwise you won't be able to see the show and it'll be very upsetting. So make sure you get the tickets, all right? And for anyone else who hasn't got the tickets yet, 
Go and get your tickets. And remember, they are literally selling out. If you haven't got a present, maybe this is a good Christmas present for your loved ones, your siblings, whoever it is. Um, go and check them out. They're all in the link in our description. Um, guys, that is the end of our episode. Oh, that's Thank sad. You. Shame. I've enjoyed it so much. Hey, a Merry Christmas to you both. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We love you guys. We love you guys so much. You're the greatest parents we could ever ask for. We truly are. Um <laughs> To get you don't like these cheesy bits, do you? So oh, honestly, I, love I like the cheesy bit. I love She's the cheesy bit. She's cringing now. So she I can cringes. Tell. So yeah, I do cringe easily, but there's three cameras on me. Even the sweetness. Okay, well listen. I love you guys. You're the greatest parents ever. Thank you. Oh, okay, everybody, go and check us out on social media: TikTok, Instagram at Newlyweds Podcast. We're also on YouTube. Go and subscribe to that Newlyweds Podcast. You can watch all of these shows. And also, if you haven't already, please, please, please subscribe to the show because it makes a huge difference for us. Thank you so much. Okay, before it's Christmas, um, if you're getting divorced, you have to say good luck. Good, good luck. luck. If you're getting married, <laughs> good just luck. do it. Okay, if you're, if you're thinking about getting engaged. Oh yeah, do it. Do it's, it, do it, do so it. It's so much fun. If you're single. Don't, don't give up hope. Now's um, the time, Christmas time, time of romance. And if for whatever reason, uh, your, your relationship is just broken down, what do you say? Call me. I'll look after you. <laughs> She'll make you an apple crumble. I'll make you an apple crumble and talk you through it. It's And it will pass. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week. We love you. Bye. Bye. Guys, love you. Bye. Bye. That was so good, guys. Fun.